I'm really honored because I've always respected what Smart Growth has done, their principles, how they've reached out even to small communities like Ketchum and had a, had a prime focus on helping people like me move, move cities towards their principles. Uh -huh. So what was your vision for Ketchum's two affordable housing projects, Northwood Place and Pine Ridge Townhomes? What was the vision for both of those? I've been living in Ketchum now for 40 years, and I've been living in Ketchum for a while, and I understood the lack of housing for a diversity of people. As an architect, I, even though I enjoyed resort architecture, I'd gotten quite tired of designing large homes for people of means, and I was really looking for the opportunity to design something that was smaller, more dense. I grew up in a very small, dense, let's call it a trailer park in a rich suburb of Chicago, and I knew what opportunities it gave me, and I didn't see that happening in Ketchum. So when the developer first came with the idea to do a mixed use, affordable housing with market rate units, it really struck a chord in me. One, I had the total feeling that I knew what it was like to live in small places, to have a small apartment, and how, how design itself could really affect the experience of living in there. And I knew what it was like to live in a place with close neighbors of different, different means. That was the major challenge. The thing that, you know, is almost always the challenge with projects like that is nimbyism. Did you have that as a challenge, trying to make those two projects happen? Um, and, you know, I assume that there had to be a little bit of it, but let me know how you overcame challenges. Overcoming nim nimbyism for me was a, it was a spiritual challenge. The people who were against it were my neighbors. They shared the community with me. I couldn't paint them as villains. I couldn't fight them. So it's not about a fight, it's about an unveiling of consciousness. What I recognized right away is they were motivated. They had a reason to show up the meetings. It was affecting their lives. Going out into the broader community and talking to people who weren't direct neighbors, inspiring them to understand and to get involved, understand the principles and what this would do for our whole community, enabled, to pre enabled me to present a balanced view to the decision makers at City Hall. So when we got one or 200 people supporting the project against 10 or 20 who were against it for very personal reasons, they were able to better weigh the pros and cons. Talking to those people directly not seeing them as enemies just because they had a different point of view was the greatest challenge I faced. Well, and to, to reflect your comment about you're working with neighbors, you're collaborating with neighbors, and to me this is a pretty important smart growth, smart growth principle that I want to highlight, and that's to foster distinctive, attractive communities with a strong sense of place. What I'd like to know is about your role in the, the Ketchum Town Square, 4th Street Heritage Corridor, and walkable Ketchum projects. There was an amazing opportunity that was brought to Ketchum with a really strong community leader, Mayor Randy Hall, who, who brought in a planner to give us a very clear vision for a downtown master plan. And I thank Tom Hudson for doing that to the day. It was a very visionary document. It inspired me, the fact that they could see how Ketchum can grow from kind of a tired, unwalkable, car-centric downtown to what it is today. So when they asked me to get involved with, as a volunteer with the Ketchum Community Development Corporation, I, was, I jumped at the opportunity. We had a small team, 12 to 18 people, of architects, planners, business owners, residents, people with an interest to look at the downtown master plan, to look at what it meant to actually build a pedestrian and bike priority street right through the center of our town. The fact that I've lived in town, I'd lived in town for 30 years at that time, and it was very difficult to walk. I often wouldn't walk the six blocks to the coffee shop because it felt unsafe. There were no sidewalks, I'm weaving in and out of cars. 
I saw the opportunity what that would mean if walking the walking experience became far more pleasant than the driving experience. Well, more of a priority too. Yes, and by making it a priority, it became a much better experience to walk. So that got me involved with putting, putting actually bringing the projects, the town square, the walkable Ketchum, and the towns and the fourth street into reality. Okay, and how do you think all those create a strong sense of place? How does it really define Ketchum in some ways? There was a, when I was researching the town square, I came across an old quote, and I don't know where it comes from, but there is no democracy without public space, and there is no community without a shared resource. It's actually a sharing of resources what creates community. People can live together in a small space, in, in, in a neighborhood, but once there's a resource to share, then community is, is created. Having a place like the town square, where you can sit on a bench and anyone can feel to come up and start to talk to you about your life, about your shared experience, about politics, about what's happening in the world, that is what creates democracy and community both. So having public spaces is the singularly most important thing for me in creating tight-knit communities. Well, as someone who has attended many an event in Ketchum Town Square, I think it's an asset to this community. Oh, thank you so much. That, that to me, is the greatest award I can get. So being recognized here in public is really great, but how it actually affects everyone I know, mm -hmm. I couldn't ask for more. Well, one last question about your thoughts on the future. Um, what do you think the big, big challenges facing Ketchum and other communities in Idaho, what are those challenges? The greatest challenge is to face the rate of change that I understand, that I think is coming both to our society, to our culture, and to our infrastructures. I have never seen such a rate of change looking forward in the future happening. The lack of, of affordable energy, the opportunity for renewable energy, the social diversity, and the opportunity to create stronger communities with social diversity. The understanding that we can't live the way we did 20 or 30 years ago and have it be sustainable, and not just sustainable, have it be a way where people can actually thrive and move into the future with opportunity and hope.